Hello, this is Dave Hurwitz at ClassicsToday.com here to talk to you about Beethoven quartets arranged for string orchestra. Now, one of the problems we have in this day and age with a composer like Beethoven is that he didn't write enough orchestral music. We have lots of orchestras and lots of ensembles, and they're all looking for repertoire to play by great composers that hasn't been done to death. So the idea of transcribing these works for larger forces is obviously very attractive. Now, chamber music enthusiasts, of course, turn their nose up at these things and have a horror of them. And I think that actually their, their disdain is a bit misplaced. One of the, the signal aspects of Beethoven's art, and everybody has been talking about it since Beethoven's day, is its, its largeness, its bigness, its, its grandness of gesture, its energy, its, its rhythmic verve. Beethoven is a composer of large-scale music. And even when he's writing for chamber forces, that bigness is built in to the music itself. Now, it's been argued that the late quartets particularly um, are too large for the medium in which Beethoven set them. And of course, the, the classic example of that is the Grosse Fuga, which works beautifully for string orchestra. And I would argue actually it works better for string orchestra because it sounds like a real chore when a string quartet plays it most of the time. Whereas for string orchestra, it's not exactly lyrical and beautiful, perhaps, in its opening gnarly fugal sections. But a string orchestra brings out the counterpoint just as well while blunting some of the music's more unattractive edges. Now, so of course, some people love the unattractive edges. So, I, you know, it's very much a matter of taste. But if you want to get the Grosse Fuga, the performance to get is Otto Klemperer's. He was a Grosse Fuga guy, if ever there was one. You know, that sort of granitic tight-lipped German. I don't know what else to say about it, but it's a great performance. Just trust me on that one. But now, to the rest of the quartets. The quartets from the Serioso on, that is quartet number, which one is that, 10 or 11 or whatever it is here, um, those were the ones where the string orchestra transcriptions begin. And the guy who did it initially supposedly was Mahler. Um, he made two Beethoven transcriptions, one of which is lost, and the Serioso Quartet, actually, that transcription survives, and it's been published, and he did it very tastefully. All he did was add some discrete double bass parts here and there, but basically he left the score as Beethoven wrote it, and that arrangement's been recorded many times, usually in tandem with Mahler's other big quartet arrangement, which is Schubert's Death in the Maiden Quartet. So I have a couple of recordings here that are that are quite good. Um, this is uh, Christoph Dochnani with the Vienna Philharmonic. Um, it's it's actually coupled with uh, not with the Schubert, but with the the Schoenberg arrangement of the Brahms First Piano Quartet, which is also a hoot that I recommend very strongly if you haven't heard it. But for the Mahler and Schubert, which is usually the way it's coupled, um, there's this one with the uh, Concertgebouw Chamber Ensemble. Um, which includes both of those quartets, and it's it's quite good. It's on the arts label. The Dohnani, of course, is on Decca. Now, when we turn to the late quartets, that's where all the transcription stuff really started happening. One of the earliest versions of, of this to be recorded, and not necessarily to be made or performed, was Toscanini's. He did the two inner movements of the last quartet, reversing their order um, to make them more effective. And, uh, you know, that's an old mono recording, which you may or may not care about. But it, it's, it's worth knowing that at least some people were doing it fairly early on in the uh, days of recordings. Now, the major Beethoven string quartet recording disc was, was this guy. This is Leonard Bernstein and the Vienna Philharmonic. He's d done the last quartet in F major, that's Opus 135, along with the C-sharp minor quartet, Opus 131. That's a magnificent performance, and Bernstein is said to have thought it was the best thing he ever did in Vienna. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a marvelous interpretation, a marvelous performance, and, and definitely worth hearing, even, even if you think you know and love the quartet in its original chamber version. There are certain things that go really, really, really well when played by a full string section. I mean, the fourth movement, 17 minutes long, variations, and also the following scherzo. 
I sound marvelous when played with by a string orchestra. Now that quartet was also recorded by Andre Previn. And here is his recording. He couples it to a string orchestra version of the Verdi string quartet, which is also an imaginative approach to that work. And that's also worth hearing if you can come across these things. Now, they may be hard to find. Now, you know, the major labels particularly are throwing everything into big boxes of hundreds of CDs and, and separate releases are hard to get, but they're often quite easy to find as digital downloads. So you can download them to your, your eye thing or your whatever it is, your media player and, uh, and, and get them that way. Finally, if you like the late Beethoven quartets and you want to hear all of them in string orchestra versions, there is this one. This is uh, currently, this is a reissue actually, but it was licensed over to BIS with the uh, Camerata Nordica conducted by Terry Tonison. Now these quartets, ver these, these versions that is, are arranged very, very sensitively um, for small string ensemble where uh, which leaves the opportunity in more intimate moments to allow solo strings to also maintain that chamber music or quartet-like quality that the music originally had. These performances are absolutely splendid in every respect. I mean, the playing is virtuosic and, and the recording is excellent. And it's a great way to get to know the late Beethoven quartets if for some reason you don't like the sound of a string quartet or you do and you're just interested in hearing what can be made of them when they're performed by larger forces. I think in this Beethoven year, we're going to be seeing a lot of strange things done to Beethoven uh, in, in arrangements and weird programming concepts and whatnot. But this is all serious stuff. It's, I mean, the music of course is as serious as it gets, but these arrangements are intensely musical. Um, they're done with respect and consideration and played with real love by, by major artists. So if you're looking to augment your Beethoven collection and you're interested in hearing new approaches to the Beethoven quartets, I would very strongly suggest that you consider listening to some of these string orchestra transcriptions. So happy listening, enjoy them. Thank you very much and be well.